Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect. Technical briefings form the core of how I work at DMS. You don't want to read a long-winded report. You're a busy person with more important things to do. So in addition to the reports, DMS also supplies a technical briefing with each one. This gives you the shortened version in plain language. The end result is that you get quicker understanding of the technical concerns and faster turnaround for operational decisions. And to show you how that works, we're going to walk through an example technical briefing today. So for our example today, I want you to pretend that you are the owner of a large factory fishing vessel, and you plan to build several changes to your vessel. You're going to extend the deck house, add a new crane, replace your trawling winches, and do some miscellaneous maintenance. This is the kind of thing that you would contract DMS to help you out with. Now, being a small vessel owner, you hired me to look at the stability impacts of all of that, with the ultimate goal of getting the ship's stability reapproved once you're done. Excellent decision. So the way this typically works is before we even cut steel, I go away, do some stability analysis, and I come back with this very long-winded engineering report. And it looks something like this. This report contains the calculations which demonstrate that the Polar Star, official number 662266, meets the stability requirements for service as a commercial fishing vessel, regulated under 46 subchapter C. Ugh, boring! And the important points get bogged down in the details of the report. Now, we need that report, but when it comes to reviewing results and making decisions from them, you would much rather have a technical briefing, which goes something like this. Achievements. What have we done so far? Well, the ship has sufficient stability. Perfect. That was the news we needed. The second thing is I have developed a burn ballast sequence. This is a table that's in the report. And it tells you burn from certain tanks for your fuel oil, then ballast down on the next set of tanks. And it tells you the exact sequence of which tanks you need to burn from, and then ballast, and then burn, and then ballast in all that specific combination. This is critical because after these modifications, as you can see in the graph on your light on the right, you're going to be right up against the stability line. Now, if you're over the line, you're unsafe. You're not no longer in compliance with stability regulations. If you're under the line, you're safe and that's fine. Right now you're right up against the line, which means you have to follow this sequence to make sure that as you burn, you're following that line down. And so it's very critical, you take this sequence, you paste this table right there in your wheelhouse so that people know to follow it. Regulations, what's been driving all of this? The main driving stability regulation was the water on deck criteria. The scenario is the idea that you're driving along and you get swamped by a wave. It fills the entire working deck back aft and that destabilizes the ship temporarily until the freeing ports can drain all of that water out. And that's the part that is really driving your current vessel stability limits. Like I said, good news is right now you pass, but that's the one thing that we need to make sure that we keep an eye on because if we ever have to look at corrections later on, we're gonna be looking at the working deck as to where we can change things. Operation standpoint, this is critical. There was a restricted pair of tanks. To make your vessel pass stability, the fuel oil number one port and starboard tanks, I had to keep them full the entire time. So basically I'm just using them for weight. Keeping those full and not actually burning them, that reduces your endurance by about 80 hours, assuming that your engines are running at full power. Now, if you don't want to go that route, there are some alternatives. Other alternatives we could look into is adding fixed ballast to the bottom of your ship. If we go that route, that is going to reduce your cargo capacity by about 100 tons, but you're going to gain back your endurance. Now, the other thing is, of course, that putting in fixed ballast will require a little bit more engineering and a little bit more construction cost. Project risks going forward. Weight control is critical. I know we don't think about weight too often, but this is something you're going to have to watch like a hawk when you modify the ship and take it into the shipyard this time. There's only minimal weight margin on the current stability analysis, and that's going to be very critical. Here's the impact of potentially running over your budgeted weight. 
Number one, if you run over your budgeted weight, you may need to repeat your stability test. That's going to extend your schedule by another 60 days in the shipyard and cost you another fifty dollars to $100,000 to repeat the test. And that's not even going to fix the problem. That To actually fix the problem, you're going to have to also add more fixed ballast to the ship. That's another 45 day, days delay possibly and another hundred dollars to $500,000 extra cost. And that's just a wild spit shot here. It depends how much fixed ballast we would have to add. Worst of all, that's decreasing your cargo capacity. Now that all sounds really scary, and I want you to understand the emphasis there of how important it is to control the weight growth when we do all these modifications. We've estimated a certain amount of weight for all these mods. We have to make sure that the shipyard stays in that limit. So, action items coming out of this. Yes, we are safe to going to construction. Let's go forward with the project. But... Weight control is the one big critical item. Make sure we write it into the contract that the shipyard must track the weight changes, and that's probably not going to be enough. Assign somebody on your own staff to monitor the shipyard. Check every three to four weeks asking for an update on weight changes. And if we do all that, we'll keep a good handle on the weight control, and we'll make sure that we come out of the shipyard where we're supposed to be on stability. Now, all of that would have been harder to find in the 300 page long report. And that's the point. So I think you're going to really like these technical briefings. They are fast, they get straight to the part that matters for you, and they are interactive so that you can follow up with other questions that might be prompted from them. The more importantly though, they are focused on you. They are focused on the ship, and they are focused on getting back to moving the project forward. So how about it? Do you want to find out more about these technical briefings? Let's find out where I can fit into your organization and talk about how this can work to benefit you. Even better, you can get a free technical briefing right now. I offer the first one for free to review any engineering concerns for your next project. So take advantage of this free resource and let's discover how your project can be more successful. Thanks very much. I am Nick, the Naval Architect.